them are running in We're pulling weight but we know the dream oh. We on point, we on point, oh boy We're balling international No time baby, you got to know we are, we are the guys Hi guys, welcome back to my channel For those of you who are subscribed to me, thank you so much for coming back to this video and if you've been watching me for a while and you've not subscribed, what are you waiting for, guys? Please subscribe to this channel. channel, channel. Please subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Turn on notification bell for any time I post a new video. Um, on Mondays, I make crying stories like this, but technically, you get to see the videos on Tuesday. But usually, I make lifestyle straight talking videos and anything that interests me, really. I make videos on anything I want, including food recipes, reviews, hauls, commentary on viral videos, and right now, crime stories so today is going to be another crime story series and i'm heading over to egypt now this is not like my usual crime stories yeah if you go back to some of my videos i'm quite happy for justice for those people who perpetrated the crime but for this crime i am feeling some type of way i'm neither here nor there so this is going to be a semi-long video but i'll try to make you keep it under 20 minutes because my subscribers do not like me to my like to make like really long videos so yeah, now as usual, um, for the lack of things to do with my hands, I will be putting on my makeup today. So yeah, let's go to um, the story of El Tobini. El Tobini is the nickname of Ramadan Abdel um, Rahman Monsu. Now Rahman Monsu uh, was born in the streets of Egypt, in a poor home, he's a child of, he's one of children of, um, of a mother of, he was born to a mother of four children, a single mother. Um, she worked several jobs to be able to take care of her children. But it was said that um, El Tobini, I'll call him El Tobini, or Abdel Ramadan, what, what name should I call him? So, El Tobini is his popular name, so let's just go with it. Now, El Tobini was born to a mother of four um, children. She's a sing she was a single mother, or she is a single mother. She's still alive. Um, she had four children, and they were born in the streets of Cairo. Now, now in Cairo, um, it's said that in Egypt, um, there are a lot of children on the streets, and the amount is between... 200,000 to 1 million which makes me kind of wonder because we have like in the northern part of Nigeria uh, we have something called Almajiri. Almajiri is more or less like a program where boys um, go out to beg I think it's a religious thing where boys go out to beg and basically fend for themselves for some years or so so most of the time these boys are prone to sexual abuse torture you know general life on the streets so i'm kind of wondering if that is the same thing um if that is the same thing that um el torbini um was undergoing however let's continue with the story so he grew up in the streets basically according to el torbini's elder brother it was said that el torbini was sort of slow and even he made a he made some statements about when his wife gives money to his own children el tobini was there to like where is my own he was that slow um even while he was in school he always skipped school and liked to play in the train station or play with himself in the toilet or playing ground he never liked school and he was also always in petty crimes like thiefery um basically he was just trouble you know wherever he went to so at age 12 he joined a street gang now this street gang uh they were involved in begging it was like a cult they were involved in begging you know selling drugs you know um raping boys and robbery and all those kinds of things so they were involved in doing those things to make money you know as per streets now street stuff so he he was he, he was that was the kind of life he was living until one day um he had a problem with then the leader of the gang and he was sexually assaulted raped and thrown off a train of which he now sustained injuries to his eyes 
to his stomach and to his legs then afterwards he stayed with the gram doing gang he stayed with the gang doing petty crimes until he was age 20 he now became the gang leader so when he was leader the bodies of young boys were turning up on train stations um bodies were found in ditches you know and it, the, the rates are it wasn't like these things were not happening with the gang before it was happening especially when boys did not do the bidding of the gangs they were raped and beaten to death and body disposed but the rate at which the bodies were being you know turning up here and there was alarming so okay during his um his tenure as a gang leader there was a falling out with a boy named Ahmed Nakwi. Now Ahmed Nakwi um, was said to be like an errand boy to El Tobini. But at some point El Tobini was wanting to you know, rape the guy, he was wanting to have um, sexual intercourse with the 12 year old and he refused. So because he refused, um, his life was threatened, El Tobini threatened to kill him. So because of that, he got scared and he went to the authorities. The authorities now arrested El Tobini and he served six months in prison. So when he got out, um, he told the gang member that he was pained, that he needed to deal with Nakwi, the 12-year-old boy. So with the help of, the, of his gang members, he, they took Nakwi to a desolate area where um, there was like, an unused water water tank and they, well, they used to use that water tank but at some point it became unusable so it was abandoned so it was like a de um, desolate water station now in this desolate water station they had like high tanks so um, Nakui was then um, brought to El Tubini El Tubini assaulted him sexually and um, killed him threw him from above the tank to the floor and he fell down and died so when he died, he left the body there and, you know, moved away. So at some point, when the police, when police people found the body, they traced the boy uh, to, to El Tobini and he was arrested. He was arrested alongside an 11 gang members. Now, one of the, his right hand man was, um, was Farak Samuel Mohammed. Now, Farag Samuel Mahama was said to be very smart, unlike Mahmoud, who if people thought he was slow. So he kind of evaded the law for some time, but after some time, he was caught and the um, trial began. But during the investigation, during the time they put, uh, they put these people on trial, they confessed to the killing of over 30 boys. 30 boys. And he told them the location of some of them. Some of them he threw in the Nile River. A lot of them were um, placed in several train locations. So, I think some of them, it was scattered all over the country. It was between Cairo, Alessandra, and is it Tantu? Sorry if I'm wondering that name. Between Cairo, Alessandra, and Tantu is hometown. So, they were able to only get 10 bodies or link 10 bodies to him. But he said it was 30 that he killed so during the trial time they took him to um, a therapist to see a therapist like a psychologist and the psychologist confirmed that he was slow in, he was low intelligence not necessarily slow but he was low in intelligence so more or less it was a retard but the brothers and the mom also told the court that he was also a retard that he couldn't be a gang leader no matter uh, what, because he didn't have the mental capacity to be a gang leader. So they were going back and forth um, in the trial until one thing happened, something happened one day. During jail time, he was asked, they gave him, they granted him permission to go see his family. So as he was going to see the family, the social care worker, care worker I, can't, uh, I can't find the name of the social care, care worker, right? And I think it's Hosini or something. I cannot find it. Uh, as they were on this way to see his parents, he then made mention that he was going to um, cut cut Hosini into pieces like red meat and throw him into this desert. But since he liked him, which is Hosini, that he wouldn't do that. So when Hosini got back to the prison, he reported what um, 
El Tobini had told him. So they asked him and he confirmed that it was true. That he just said that to Rossini to see if he would maintain his pleasant disposition towards him. Pleasant disposition. <laughs> How can you tell someone that and in order to find a reaction? I, I believe it's just a sick person that can do that, but let's continue. So during this trial, you know, a lot of revelation happened. In the cell system, he, confer he confessed to his colleagues that he got the name El, El Tobini in, um, during his time in the streets. That one time, whilst begging, you know he was a street kid, that one time while begging, he was attacked on the streets. Um, and they, and there they took his money, they raped him and threw him from a moving train. That is how he got the name um, El Tobini. Okay, the person who threw him was called Abdul El Tobini. So, but he survived it, but he left him with a permanent scar. That was what he told the people in prison. And his people came and said that he was a simply teen, that there was no way he could um, commit more of this, commit a lot of uh, a lot of these murders, or, or become a gang member. Now, because of the incident um, of the social worker, they tried him and discovered that okay, that he was guilty. However, however. Uh, they found that he was guilty and he was sentenced to death by hanging. But the story on the street is that El Tobini was actually innocent. The people were talking about his innocence to the extent that he has a memorabilia, guys. And most, a lot of people, like a sandwich shop, they named a part of their sandwich El Tobini. So they were saying that he was actually framed, um, that he could not possibly be the leader of a gang that um, he was it was too retarded to be leader of a gang and um, some other people were saying that because he was a simpleton he was easily used by the gang to commit this art and people said because he was raped um, at a young age he was sexually abused he didn't really know much um, of anything so he was more or less like a victim so he had he thought it was normal so he had to perpetrate that but guys he did that to almost 30 boys he raped 30 boys another theory on the street said because he was muslim and in muslim or islam they actually condemn homosexuality so he was why he killed those boys was because he was trying to get get rid of the guilt um he felt because he was actually gay he got rid of it so whenever he do commits that art he kills the boys so many things on the streets but the one that is that has circulated most is that he's actually innocent that the police people actually framed him up um, it was found out that looking at his record he went to a correctional place uh, a place that is for people who are slow you know so but on reporters going there they found out that the pages there was some sort of foul play that some a lot of the pages were yellow pages but the one that says he was a retard you know was removed was not was not there so a lot of things but at the end of the day he was found guilty and he was sentenced to death if you are an, an Egyptian watching this I guess you will know more on the story than I actually do but the story is so sad is the story so far is quite sad and I know that we have Almajiris in Nigeria I know what these boys they face these boys are typically because we have the issue of insecurity right now in Nigeria and Fulani headsmen are the ones you know they're the terrorists in that country so and some of these Almajiri boys are said to like join these headsmen join this Boko Haram group so I can imagine um, that probably they have that kind of system in Egypt. It's so sad that a culture or culture will let um, young boys um, fend for themselves, and you know people can easily take advantage of that. And which has and this has been happening for years and years and years. People have been taking advantage of these boys on the street. So I think that he was a victim of you know his circumstance of being poor, of growing from this, of growing in the street, you know, and also his mental probably his mental health was not all there. I'm not justifying killing in any way. So that's why I kind of feel some type of way, you know about him killing people not supporting that he killed people but the circumstances leading to him killing people so yeah el, to el tobin actually means express train some people said it's turbine 
engine i don't know which what do you think it is put it down at the comment section so guys that's all for today do you like this my look i know it's simple i'm not a makeup but i know i'm not a makeup artist but i'm actually really loving the look today i think i look glowy and shiny and all natural so guys i'll see you guys in my next video i'll see you if you if you're really if you're watching my crime story i'll see you next tuesday i post on tuesdays but i make the videos on mondays and uh, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up comment down below and i'll see you whenever i post bye, -bye.